morning and welcome back to the program where we explore the fascinating world of New York City real estate and all the people behind all of it. I would like to welcome my listeners and viewers in the United States and all around the world. I am Vince Rocco. It is Tuesday morning here in New York City and this is Talking New York Real Estate. At this hour, in a challenging market, adaptability and proactive approach are essential for real estate agents by focusing on targeted marketing efforts emphasizing value and staying informed about market trends, agents can navigate a bad market more effectively. In navigating a challenging real estate market, adept real estate agents strategically plan marketing programs to stand out in the face of economic downturns. Embracing the digital landscape, these agents leverage online platforms for effective advertising, showcasing properties, uh, through virtual tours and interactive presentations. And we're going to have all of that and so much more as Talking New York Real Estate gets underway on this very busy Tuesday morning. And in the news this morning, the Upper East Side home of the late journalist Barbara Walters is back on the market after by a buyer backed out of a deal signed last year. This according to the New York Post. The apartment at 944 Fifth Avenue was first listed in April of 2023 for $19.75 million dollars before dropping in price to $17.750 million and entering into contract. According to the Post, the deal fell through, leaving a hefty deposit behind. The pre-war co-op returned to the market this month, now asking a discounted price of $16.995 million. The full-floor apartment has 11 rooms, 5 bedrooms, and priceless Central Park views. Alexa Lambert of Compass has the listing. And Redfin came out last week with a startling report comparing ownership of larger properties, three bedrooms plus, in the United States by generation. It found that empty nest baby boomers own 28% of the nation's larger properties, while millennials with children own only 14%. The report is based on Redfin's analysis of census data from 2022 and points out that there is not much financial incentive for these boomers to let go of their larger homes. Most boomers, 54% of them who own places, have no mortgage, and those that do have lower interest rates than what borrowers can get today. Baby boomers can and should fuel the inventory of larger homes as they become empty nesters, but many of these homes require renovation. But this seller hopefully won't be as price greedy because they paid much less years ago than what they're asking for today, usually aspirational, and that is that remains to be seen. And finally, what's more romantic than Times Square? As part of the Times Square Alliance's annual Love in Times Square, couples can uh, propose, tie the knot, and renew their vows at the crossroads of the world on Valentine's Day. Can you imagine? Registration for a chance to participate in Love in Times Square is now open, and just when I thought, I've heard it all. Anyway, with me today are Ben Willick from Elegrin Forbes Global Properties and the host of the podcast Love and Heartbreak, Real Estate Unfiltered. Alex Cote from Close, Louise Phillips Forbes from Brown Harris Stevens, and Matthew Leone, who is Chief Marketing Officer here at Brown Harris Stevens. Okay, I'm Vince Rocco. We're back with my guests. Thank you all for being here. We're coming to you today from the Moore Network here at Brown Harris Stevens, my really kind of happy place these days. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get to it. But Ben, I want to start with you because, you know, when I was reading this on your bio uh, the other day, and I had remember seeing this before, you were the agent of the decade, okay? Not of the year, not of the month, not of the quarter, like, you know, people overdo these days, but the agent of the decade from 2010 to 2020 at your previous firm, you're now director of sales at your current firm where you've been credited uh, in transforming agents, sales agents, their production, and you're considered the current superpower in helping them get to where they need to be, finding the version of themselves mm -hmm. that they need to find, whether it's business, personal lives, or even in their communities. You know, to me, that sounds like an awful lot. How do you do that? Well, first of all, thank you so much. Those are very, very kind words, and I appreciate that. I'd say uh, the first thing is it does not happen solo. So we have an amazing, amazing team. And I say the, the more that I do and the larger the organization gets, the more you rely on other people. But I think speaking very specifically to the person, because whoever's in front of me, and we were having some good laughs about this you know, before the show, you know, what's going on with them is the most important. And I think we'll get into this, I think, with some of the marketing strategies. But that, that why, I think, is the first kind of fundamental starting point. Because if you just start working on the what, which I have a lot of agents who come into my office and they see some tactic or they hear some marketing thing and they start going into the what it is. But if you don't know why you're doing it, 
uh, you know, you're going to lose sort of that inspiration. Because what I like to highlight to people, there's a difference between motivation and inspiration. Mm -hmm. Motivation is temporary. Inspiration can never be uh, a fire that can never be put out. Right. And so when an agent is working inspired, we have the, then the right people in the right places because you have to have so much consistency in this business, consistency with the marketing efforts that we're going to talk about today. And, you know, same thing with going to a gym. If you go to the gym the first day, you're not going to see any results. But if you go a little bit every day for a year, you're going to start to see some results. Same thing with the real estate business and the marketing. So you have to have the inspiration in order to have the consistency. You have to know why you're doing it. And when you start to see some of those little changes and those little positive things over time, having, I think, the right leaders to come in on my part is to say, hey, you know, this is a positive thing that's been going on. And how can we continue to keep that momentum? Almost a positive addiction of sort to that. So. You also talk about energy and by using your core tactical ideas and structuring your business to create, and I like that word, inspire massive action in important areas of your, of your business. What is the strategy in doing that? So you, you try and get them to understand the why, you could try and get them to understand who they are, you know, the message that they need to project, but how, you know, how do you work with them to get that strategy, actually, the long-term strategy in place to you know, do the, the tactical and then the, you know, the long-term? Yeah, uh, I, I'm gonna, you know, nothing I do is so unique. Uh, I stole something from Peter Tia, who's actually in the medical you know, field, and I kind of love this framework he poses on thinking about longevity and just applying it to, you know, some of the uh, some of the agents. Uh, so I think one thing I like to highlight with folks is outcome, strategy, tactics. And so often people think about those tactics, you get going with something and then you end up in a place that you never even thought about. So how can we think about that to begin with, have some future casting in terms of what outcome will you actually have? Mm -hmm. An example with myself is when I was a young you know, young, dumb, 20 something <laughs> early in the business, I thought owning more property and owning more property was going to be the key. I never thought about why I wanted to do that. And as I moved through the business, what was most important to me was optimizing for my family time. And I realized that, hey, owning a lot of property comes with a lot of headaches. So I need to own enough to have and be able to take care of for my family. But then I want to be able to spend time with them quite a bit as well. So each agent, it's a little bit different, but highlighting that outcome first, starting from that place, mm -hmm. going to that future place, what's the strategy to then get to that outcome that you're looking for? You know, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people come in saying, I want to make more money and I want to do this. Well, where does that lead you five years down the road, 10 years down the road? I'm blessed to be able to interview lots of top agents in the city. And even some of the top, top agents run around like chickens with their head cut off because they're still chasing tactics. So I think this is a very interesting framework and way to, I think, think about, you know, how to build your strategy. Quality versus quantity sometimes, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. that that's in anything you do in life, but certainly in this business, because we can tend to run around like chickens without heads in this business because of the, the nature of this business and the way of clients and, and us, you reactive. know. Right, reactive. Reactive. In, in a reactive mode, in a methodical mode. Sorry, being reactive uh, very, is, very much is, so. is very easy and and to be distracted by that. But if you if you set the mindset to be methodical, then it, it gives you the pathway. But thank you for that segue because I wanted to ask just in, in general, well, everybody, you know, that reactive, you know, conditioning of ours because we think maybe that we don't do enough, we're not good enough, or we're not servicing our clientele fast enough and we react sometimes incorrectly, okay, for lack of a better word, how do we manage that? Because I think it's innate for all of us to just, you know, get excited, get crazy, get whatever, and then we realize, oops, I probably should not have said that. I probably should have maybe structured my commentary a little differently or my email, and we'll talk mm. about emails later. Mm. <laughs> how do you react? And you know, before you hit that send button, please, yeah. okay? That's what we have chat GPT for. Rewrite it. Change there the tone. You go. Come on. <laughs> but even the you, you sometimes girls like feel me are compelled. so happy about that. How can you take this FU and make it sound nice? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Make well, it, we have an actual button in close that has a button that make it more professional, <laughs> change the tone. There's but a people still kind of feel compelled to add that one last line to make it, you know, whatever. And sometimes that punch is just not a good thing. Reactions. How do we curtail our reactions? I, I will just say that, first of all, I talk to people on the phone much more than I do emailing. And then when my negotiations, I'm always as per our conversation, and that's methodical and to the point, but the inflection and your tone and your 
your ability to disarm somebody with that an email cannot do. So I find that, that, that being reactive and creating a sense of urgency often is an effort that sellers and buyers appreciate, but you do have to kind of contain yourself. You know, that's sort of like a lost art, you know, talking on the phone. I mean, I wish we can get back to that. I mean, the texting, the emailing versus the tone and the personality, right, that we used to, you know, use, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. like went out the window. I, what I usually say, I'm kind of a question for you, uh, mm -hmm. Weezy, is, you know, I see agents have to be, to, for you to get to that point, you have to have a lot of self-awareness. I think, you know, Socrates said the unexamined life is one not worth living and be able to like reflect on all those conversations. So like, what if, I'm, I'm just kind of curious, like you're doing that now, but what have you done to get to hmm. that? A lot, a day at a time, a lot. Um, I mean, I think that if we ever stop learning, we stop living. And so, you know, I feel, and it's funny, I just said today, I'm gonna do a post because I, I think that my family helped strive me to be the best version of myself because I want them to be proud of me at all times. And so so I when I got into real estate, I was a dancer. I knew nobody. I knew no nothing. And I literally would listen to Tony Robbins. I would do I did a mastermind think rich and uh, um, Napoleon Hill. Na Napoleon Hill. Rich. And yeah. I did a whole I set up a a, a, a a mastermind with with other people in business because I needed to learn how to be a business person. I was a dancer and a degree in special education. So it's it's really the mindset of always wanting to be the best version of yourself. And that takes care of a lot of other stuff. I'm gonna get into more of that. Matt, though, I wanna ask you, last week I watched you hosted a webinar uh, where you said agents need to be proactive and prepared for the future, regardless of any market. Now, we all know in this business, 22 years in this business, markets come, they go, mm -hmm. they're up, they're down, they're flat. What, I don't even know how to describe this market, okay? Yeah. Uh, you use the term actionable when describing how to prepare your marketing um, marketing strategy, your marketing thoughts for today. Explain to us what you mean by that word actionable. All right. Well, I'm going to explain that actionable, but I'm also going to give you your flowers for a second. I mean, you have done over 350 shows uh, Ooh, in your career. 358. <laughs> 358. I mean, I, I cannot believe how yeah. dedicated you've been to this craft and how amazing you. you've built an audience. And we have in like the, the last couple months have helped you take it to the next level and go Super from audio exciting. to video. And uh, we've seen your growth in that short period of time, even beyond what you've already found success in. So I, it, it, it's the first time that I've been on the physical show that you've done inside of this studio that we built. And it's really great to see it in person and share it with you guys. But this is why I call him Chief, okay? Yeah. Thank you. But also shout out to the people that, in the back the too that are on. Positive momentum. And positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thousand shows coming. Meant, no, <laughs> meant, meant all good, all good. Yeah, I, I mean, you're like the Cal Ripken of okay. podcasts. You just, every week, you just keep going. You don't skip a beat. You're never yeah. sick. This guy's a, 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 a machine. Uh, but it's great to work with you, Vince. Uh, but in terms of proactivity, uh, what I really feel is, is that I always say this to every agent is, is there's 16,000 of you in this city like that. That's crazy. Uh, there's 2.1 million of you in the United States. There needs to be something that differentiates you from the rest of the pack. The average New Yorker knows around 20 to 25 real estate agents personally. That's a fact. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So if you don't fill the gap, someone else will very quickly. So the proactivity of your marketing strategies are, are essential, especially in markets where it's uncertain. You know, if it's uncertain, the, f the person who gives them the information to get them off the bench and get in the game is gonna likely get the business. Yeah. So being proactive is regularly checking in. And I do love the check-ins of, you know, uh, on the phone and personal emails and using the CRM because it feels a little bit more personal, but if you need to get a little bit more mass marketing of approach, the proactivity is checking in with them over the channels you have, the email, the social, the mass marketing means, mm -hmm. uh, and telling them where you are in the market right now. Like, what, how do I navigate this? Is it time to get in? Do I stay on the bench? What has changed with rates? Is the economy still performing well? Like I hear the unemployment rate is still low. You know, the, the stock market is still at, at, at a high, but why am I on the, the bench? Like you need to help them get off the bench, but you have to be honest and authentic to them. 
And and I think being proactive is 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 broadcasting your knowledge, your analysis, your forecasting of the market. That's going to help them sure. because that's the only value you provide. We do not sell widgets here. <laughs> you don't give free samples like a Trader Joe's and you're like, I'd say it's good. I'm going to get it. Like you don't do that. Your only <laughs> commodity <laughs> is the value that's inside your head. And knowledge is power. Always. Yes. Always. And, 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 and how, data. Knowledge and data. Mm-hmm. And that is something that that we know that the buyers and sellers, I mean, it's like um, the best cocktail trivia is what's going on in the real estate market and being knowledgeable about that and sharing it generously. One of the things I'd offer up for advice for agents too with that, because I, I could not agree more and you have to find that unique differentiator. And I think we'll probably talk about it here is like relationships are so important. And most people have that engaged base, whether it's past clients, their sphere of influence, whatever the case might be. Go out and ask for advice from your clients, right? Every agent and their network might have different things of knowledge Mm -hmm. that, you know, is going to resonate more with them. I see too many agents take like maybe it's prepackaged stuff or the things that everybody else is saying where the people in your network, if you're authentic to yourself, A, that phone call, everybody loves to lend advice, go out, ask them for advice, and you're going to also learn how to better market to the people who are engaged with you too. So just, I think, like to take that one step further for, you know, people who are, who are listening. So. I'd add focus too. Keep, yeah. keep it tight. Your sphere doesn't need to, you're talking about spreading yourself too thin. Right. If you want to build relationships, you can't do it to a thousand people. It's that is so direct. key. Keep that focus mm-hmm. on your core sphere. Yep. It makes a huge difference. We always talk about agents will come to us and what do we, like, Knock it down. Who, who are your past buyers? Sellers? Well, those, the, those people, people want to do this all the time, and they don't realize that if you do this, you're going to be a lot more successful and probably faster, right? Well, it's hard to be authentic. Slowly, right? How but are you going to be authentic if you're trying to do it across 2,000 people? Correct. <laughs> Matt, one of the... so many hours in the day. Yeah, they <laughs> yes. can't. There are some, yeah, right. Matt, the other thing that I uh, picked up on uh, in that webinar is uh, one of our agents, Jordan Silver, I think it was, you know, explained that finding the hook that uh, gets them interested, them being the people out there, uh, in a story or whatever you're posting keeps them engaged because mm-hmm. we all can say, oh, here, I have a great story for you. But if you don't phrase it in a certain way or kind of hook them into listening from start to finish, you lose them. Well, so even, what is that? First hook? two seconds. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even, well that, that's but, but, it. Alex just talked about like, you know, the, 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 the sort of catching them uh, quickly. <laughs> I, I mean, we have to look at the attention span of a human has devolved past uh, a goldfish, you know, so and it's true. <laughs> So what we're looking at is, is that if you don't hit them in the first couple I'm seconds of whatever <laughs> marketing strategy you're using, they're going on to the next one. They're they're pre-programmed to to just swipe, swipe you up. off. So so what we have to do is, is in the first, <laughs> you said gone. two seconds, I would agree with you, two, three seconds. You have to give them what is the value proposition of continuing to spend time with me and, and listen to what I have to say, because there is a lot of noise out there that is competing for that space inside of that, that person's device. And if you, if you are not reaching them and hitting them quickly, you know, you're going to lose it. So what, what we like to say is that if you're, if you're sharing, uh, you know, let's say a 60 minute piece, what is the most newsworthy three second phrase that is going to draw people in to continue watching don't wait 20 seconds to to get that out get it in the first second ask a question pose a call to action whatever it is you have to do it in the first three seconds you know the thing is i i would uh, add even in content it's important because sometimes you're reading listing content and it's like this long oh yeah, yeah. or uh, on social media, you're going to lose completely. But even on your headline, website. your subject line, the, what is the right. first thing one sees? Like even, um, and I, I, I always find it funny. There's an episode of The Office. It was like season two or three, and Michael Scott was always talking to someone trying to get business, and and Pam the secretary would would patch him in, but he she always knew that he got it wrong the first time, so she wouldn't patch him in the first time. She would just say, uh, "Michael, he's on," and then he would say something horrible. Well, the first time he goes, okay, sorry that that he wasn't actually on, but now he's on, and then he got it right the second time. It's getting it right the first time is so key, and getting it getting it out in a way that's going to draw people in immediately. I gotta find a meme. I gotta find right, that. But meme it's very true from the office. I gotta find that. All right, so l- let's talk a little bit about video. Uh, you know what? We're going to take a break. We have so much more to get to. <laughs> Lots of information. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 
Okay, everybody, we are back. So we're talking about marketing strategies, marketing ideas, how to better yourself in our profession of real estate to get your, your message out there, mm. to find that hook, and to be able to get people to want to pay attention. Matt said before, you know, what is your differentiator? There are so many different ways. All right, let's 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 quickly talk about video. Before we get to AI, because that's a very important subject, let's talk about video and content creation for social media, okay? I mean, even on regular traditional uh, real estate websites, but on social media, most people, I mean, come on now, cannot write. They dream of writing, but aren't good at it. They really kind of are bad at it. What help is available out there for people who want to do better in their content, in their videos, in whatever presentation they're putting out there on social for real estate, what, where can people go to find that additional help? Well, <clears throat> I think the- To write great copy. There, there's a few things that I think are most obvious. You know, first of all, if that's not your, you know, Pareto's principle, the 10% drives the 90% of results. So if that's not right. gonna be what drives it for you, you know, focus on the 10%, first of all. Putting that aside, and if you want to, you know, get better. I think a lot of people have this idea of copyright and content creation as like, I need to be sitting in a room and think of these, you know, genius ideas and all this sort of stuff. I mean, your team, your agents that are your peers, your management staff, you know, people in your network, clients that we talked about, you know, and things like that, don't go at it alone. You know, I see agents all the time who, you know, most people who fail or struggle to gain momentum with it are the ones trying to do that. Whereas the other ones, we might have prepackaged content. They start with at least that type of thing to get the feeling, get mm -hmm. some of the momentum. Uh, run some of what you're thinking by, you know, your peers and get feedback and, you know, things like that. Of course, there's the chat GPTs and things like that. And I think we'll get to AI. I view AI as a tool and as a kind of get the writer's block out um, and just to get something started and on piece of paper so you could then make edits and put your own flavor and thought into everything. So important. But yeah, yeah. I think bringing that then to, so AI to me across all platforms is a tool right now. Um, but you know that collaboration, you know, with people, don't just do it in isolation. You're going to set yourself Absolutely. up for failure if you do that. Yeah, and I, just to add to the to the AI, I think ChatGPT that helps you just gather your thoughts. But but what I've heard from at least for the next ten to fifteen years, who knows what happens after that, is that it replaces it replaces ones that are below average and average at their job. Yeah. The ones yeah. that are gr good, very good and exceptional, it's not touching that. So it's like, you know, if you want an average job at, at writing whatever you're putting together or, or, or coming up with a headline or coming up with a, a, a hook, uh, yes, it will help you, but it, it's not going to differentiate you from the great ones. It's going to probably differentiate you from the ones that are just starting out that are, mm -hmm. are, are really not at the highest of level um, it, when it comes to the, the chat GPT. But I think you, you also have to add that I, I think it's very important. Yes, you do have to speak. You have to come to the office. You have to speak to your peers. You have to hear what's going on. Run things off of them. Speak to your sales director. So speak to necessary. Your, 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 so many of the, 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 the brokerages out there have a marketing staff and copywriters and strategists use them. They're That's on the I shelf. Say, I was going to say, talk to your marketing. Yeah, they're, on, they're <laughs> on the shelf. Pull them off. Yeah. Utilize resources. them. They yeah. use resources, right? Yes. That's what they're here for. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I think I, I do agree with you, but you know, the, the, the younger agent or the newer agent or the agent who just cannot write all of a sudden, I'm, you know, and from coming from someone who used to manage uh, agents, I read some of the postings or read some of their listing content and I'm like, okay, chat GPT, you yeah. never were able to write like that. <laughs> we, had, remember, we had that, we had that list you when you first came but out. That's, like, so far fetched, right? But that's yeah. the yeah. point. Yeah. If it's not it's genuine like to that. you, like your yeah. point yeah. before is add to it, change it, write Absolutely. it down, change a word. Change, I mean, I use it, but I, I don't ever take that and put it in my copy because right. it's not me. And I really have a problem with that. It solves so I will change phrases. Problem, right? It, yeah. It's the blank sheet of paper problem. But it's yeah. not your voice. You got to right. yes. it's, it's your voice. It's, yeah. Thank you. It's not my voice or it's not your voice. So make it your voice. Okay. It's great, you know, guideline. It's great, you know, uh, t uh, text and information, but make it your own. So let's talk about an artificial intelligence in marketing, in real estate. What are the pros and what are the cons for agents who want to get involved in this technology? And also people ask me all the time, what is it really going to do for me, Vince? What is AI really going to do for me? I'm going to hear all this wonderful talk about AI, but you know, I'm a real estate agent. What do I need that for? It's going to replace you. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that the news media has put that in all our minds about everything AI, but that's not true. But, yeah. but how is it going to help us as an agent? Yeah. I mean, I look at it, it's a tool. It's, it's almost like 
in my you know grammar checker or spell check. I mean, it's become a tool. It's falling back. It's just something extra to help you. It's not going to replace something. It can solve, as I said before, the blank sheet of paper problem. We've played in the AI space for over a decade, mm -hmm. and there's lots of different types of AI. ChatGPT made it, you know, a household well, name. Right? What about a year and a half ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, last, yeah. this is probably about a year, early yeah, 23. Yeah, 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 late 2023, yeah. 2022. Right, okay. So it's brand new. Right, so generative AI is what we're talking about there, and that's what it really exploded because it's very, you can see it. You can push a button, you can watch things right, and we yep. use it in clothes in yep. all kinds of different ways. You can create a campaign with it, you can create a newsletter with it, and you just tell it what you want, and it, great. Change tone, right? I wrote up this email, it's not so great, maybe I'll make it sound a little better. Totally agree with you on phone, by the way. I think yeah. people have stopped phone mm -hmm. for some reason. Different generations, right? I love Different that. generations. Different generations is changing. But our approach from the early days was how do we really focus you on relationship? I mean, this has been a problem. We've all said, how many times have we said the word relationship here, right? Yep. And when it comes to CRM, when it comes to the platforms we use, they tend to be devoid of relationships. If you think about CRM, the R part is always missing for some reason. So we, we work from the bottom up. So we have you connect all the places you communicate. Connect your email, connect your calendar, connect your phone, connect your text. And we analyze those streams of communications. So when you come into your CRM for the first time, all your relationships are there and all your communications are there. And this is where our AI starts to come in. We analyze it, figure out who you know, who you know well, when was the last time you talked to them. And so when we talk about it, we talk about it more like a personal assistant. I saw that predictive. this morning and somebody popped up and, you know, the, the app said, uh, it's been six months since you've been in touch with this person. Might maybe you want to give them a call. And I'm like, whoa, we're talking about that today. But yeah. that, that's it. The predictive it. suggestions, I think, is its greatest value. Yeah. But absolutely. when you get down to the weeds of what you're going to say to that client, that's all you. Like that. That maybe right. some some right. very broad macro suggestions, but that's that that's the meat of why they're going to work with you. Absolutely. And I think that connectivity and that authenticity, and you know, I'm dyslexic, so I. I'm not a great writer, but I'm authentic to exactly who I am. It drives everybody on my team is like, where is that period? Why is that period over there? Explanation. Like, but that's how I communicate. And for some, it's 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 not going to be somebody that really is looking for somebody more formal. But I'm just very relaxed in that. And I'm not going to change exactly who I am. And I think that's been an important thing for me to embrace. During a break, you were, you were telling uh, Alex about, you know, your many, many, many thousands of contacts, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was a great point, so I wanted you to, you know, bring yeah. it up on air. Tell us why so, uh, I will just or how it's helpful. For, for, for everybody, CRM. I have been, you know, trying to, I have over 23,000 contacts. And because I'm dyslexic, I have every husband and wife on the same, or husband and husband, whatever it may be, on the same contact. So first name is hus husband, first name, last name, second name, wife, second, you know, as the last name. And so we're undoing all that, which is a nightmare. Sounds fun. But I am <laughs> reaching out to, we have done about 8,000, um, maybe 6,500 actually. We will, by the end of this week, we'll be at 8,000. And I have had, I can't tell, I mean, I can't even count how many responses where they're like, so great to hear from you because I approached it with, I'm trying to stay connected and I'm trying to get connected. And this is what I have for you. It's very authentic. And, and, yeah. and, and this is where I am and tell me what's going on. And literally there are probably 42 to date, 42 leads of people who are saying, "Wees, can you help my aunt? She needs to sell her apartment. It's just, and I was just trying to get things organized for clothes. But, awesome. but, yeah. but that's what it's all about. I've said for years, every time I send something out in a major distribution, even if you get one per, I don't have 23,000, but I'm you know up there, but when you get one person back, we talked about this earlier, Ben, one person that comes back and says, hey Vince, I have a question for you, or hey, I have somebody I know that wants to buy something or sell something. One person out of thousands, when you send out that distribution, it's worth the entire time it took to clean up the list and Absolutely. get it out there and mail it to people. And I use my distribution list like regularly because there's great data that goes, that needs to get out there. And our department here gives, I mean, Matt's department here gives us lots of good information and I send it all out. And people every time, and I tell Greg this all the time, he, he laughs, our chief um, uh, economist. But every time I send something out, I get questions back. It's like every time. Well, that was great stats. Those are great numbers. Well, well I really like this? that Manhattan report. But what, yeah, can you tell me about every time? 
So it's got to be something of value. Otherwise no, you I, 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 I pick and choose. No, no, no. It's always, I think, it's always yeah. something of value. But the point is you're reaching somebody or a bunch of somebodies. Um, ben, tell us, you know, with your superhuman powers and managing, and managing agents, whatever, <laughs> tell us how you, how you talk to them about the social media aspect of our marketing capabilities, aside from just being, you know, the great marketeer and the great, you know, salesperson, whatever. Do you get into social media pros and cons at all or no? Yeah, I think everything we're talking about here, and it kind of ties into, to answer your last question as well, is the big thing it's all saving us is time, right? And as an and agent, money. And if you look at the bigger macro trend, right, this business, and, and, and Vince, you're a, a legend to me when I started off, and so I, I appreciate being on here and having the opportunity. And, uh, you know, but we've seen over the time we've been in the business, right, the business continues to congregate more and more to the people who can process more volume, but also be spending more time in that, you know, let's call it enlightened, you know, category, mm -hmm. authentic, call it authentic to yourself, you know, that stage of a relationship building process with, you know, call, whether it's 20 people or 100 people, but, you know, can you spend more time with those folks? Social media, I think, allows you to reach more of those people on a regular basis or have them feel like they are connected to you in some way. So I've seen and had agents underneath my management who have huge social media followings, but doesn't translate over into any business. And then I've seen agents with a really tight social media following like we were just talking about who are getting referrals just regularly mm -hmm. because what they're targeting is those people are connected, they feel connected to them. Uh, the messages that they're putting out, they know that that speaks to their audience. So now this is a way, just like AI is a tool and social media is a tool, to leverage your time because we're saving ourselves time. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that you're going to enjoy because you have to be consistent with it, just like we kind of talked about earlier, then lean into that and know that this is a time saver for you to be spending more valuable time, you know, with some of those fewer people. And can you do that, you know, just more and more over your career and use these tools to clean up some of the, you know, process related stuff that goes yeah, into this. 100%. <laughs> and that's why we do what we do. You don't want to spend your day entering data into a CRM. That's right. like, you know, you, that's old school, right? You want to spend spending your time building relationships out there, selling. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be doing that. So the more you can use technology to eliminate that, the better everything is. So, But I think also you have to look at like the, the marketing formulas reach and repetition. And if you are only using one or two forms of, uh, of, of communicating with your sphere of influence is not enough. Yeah. You know, like you need to see something multiple times before it resonates. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. are, let's say, you know, on your email and you that's, see that's a newsletter true. and then you go on to Instagram and you see a post and then you see your voicemail and you saw that they caught up with you. And then maybe you see another method, maybe a CRM, uh, you know, post a, or, or message a couple weeks mm -hmm. later, you're starting to resonate. You're starting to rise above the rest. And, and I think social media is a part of that, but a lot of agents think that social media is like the only the only thing that <laughs> yeah. you need to do. Unless you're really good at it, you're not gonna be stand out. You're yeah. not, you're not. And, and well, I think the, the only ones that I've found success of getting those consistent leads are the ones that right now, especially in New York City, I think the rental uh, uh, available inventory is is just broken, and you know not many people oh, are choosing to spend uh, several dollars a day to put their home available to the market, and and they're like, okay, well, let's. What other options are out there? And and there are certain people that are TikTok. going out and they're filming rentals and they're doing it themselves and they're editing it in TikTok and they're sharing it on TikTok, sharing it on Instagram and they're getting real leads because they've connected with a group of agents who are also working with uh, with with other potential renters and they're getting a lot of business. I can I can I add just like a great I think TikTok has been I've seen that take off for the rental market tremendously Tremendous. rental leads for for agents. Another big one too, both with rental leads, but also potential sales too. Like uh, in the social media channels, like whether it's a Facebook group, whether it's a Google job board, you know, and things like that, can you have people you've worked with like post and say a good thing about you in some of those areas? Cause it's one thing yeah, for yeah. you to put it out there. It's another thing for someone else. So like just in terms of like, I like giving agents good ideas for things yep. that we see. I think that is also very valuable in those. Yeah. those I, I have always, and you know this about me, Matt, as I don't like testimonials, but when they're done right, they just seem so, I don't know. But that is that is really great. I just don't know if I'm going to be the one that can ask that. 
Um, but anyway. But but I Over but I mom's group. but I <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with Ben though because people want to people read that stuff and they say, well, okay, so she's must be great or she must be good or maybe he's you know you know the best in the you know, whatever and so people do react to that. I know sometimes I'm uncomfortable with it too, but I realize that there are people out there who. Look, it's no, no different than looking, you know, uh, on Yelp, right? You want someone else's oh, opinion yeah, yeah. about I mean, a like, restaurant. You're right? going to Rotten Tomatoes to decide whether or not you're going to go see that movie. Well, there you're, 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 go. Good I, movies right now. One hundred percent. I'm not so, wasting my time on a bad movie. Oh I, if I'm going all and, that way, I know I need to know that the critics and the audience think it's a good movie. What, the, what and, that, and but I, that's the point, it's right? So I mean, it's yeah. so right. It's yeah, so, so I'm not going to waste my time for six months working with a real estate agent if others have not shared good experiences. I, I, I totally agree with that. I have two kids, six and four, right? And we go to McDonald's and they always give the Happy Meals with like the, you know, the toys and things like that of the upcoming movie. But I'll go on and be like, is this going to be a good movie for adults and look at like Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is that, like, am I actually going to go want to see that? Like, we, we am I going to fall asleep social... in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Guns Out, right. um, uh, uh, the... the the gorilla one is supposed to be really good. Okay. <laughs> and, and if it's not good, make that. sure that there's reclining seats so you could take it down. Yes. Yeah. Alex, we've danced around clothes yep. enough. Let's 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 talk a little bit about clothes, sure. okay? You can identify and capitalize on pre-existing relationships for more effective lead routing and agent recruitment, okay? Uh, track deals from lead or origination to close transactions and more. Tell us more about clothes and how it really does. Ha I mean, I use it here. Yep. Tell us how it it really can help an agent get better at what we do. Yep. So we're very focused across the on, board. Yeah, we're very focused on your sphere to start with. And so of course, front end deal with leads process. We can help you centralize, keep them all in one place. But at its core, it's all about relationships. About you know, as we were just talking about, how do we get them together into one place? Eliminate the work you don't want to do. So we take care of that, and then help you connect more authentically at scale. Is the way we like to talk about it. So how do I reach out to a bunch of people? but do it in a way that feels authentic. So we give you tools to do that. Lots of AI built into close, but we try to let it kind of fall back into the background and just assist you along the way. It's not gonna replace you. You still have to bring your voice forward and all of that, but at its core, that's how we help agents. It works continuously too. So we're keeping track of everything. Talk about staying in flow and trying to communicate. How did you communicate last? Was it a call? Was it an email? Was it a text? Helping with that, change that diversity around. Similar story, we had an agent, um, end of beginning of last year, end of the previous year, he came, you know, came in, talked to his the president of the brokerage and said, My business completely fallen off after COVID. I've got nothing. And he was a top agent. Similar approach. He said, she said, you know what you need to do? So she, he got in there and said, okay, I'm gonna try to send a holiday card list. I've been at this for 20 years and I've never sent <laughs> sent a holiday card because I've never been organized. And so he reached out to every single person asking for the ad, for their address. <laughs> Simply that, right back to where he was. You know, yeah. all these leads started coming people, in. People it's forget. Just like, it, it, it's just the simplest thing, but it's like, and then Close is now keeping him in rhythm, and he sends like little texts, he send, reaches out, it calls. It's just oh, it's, this, a, it's really amazing really how it works. Yeah. It's really amazing. Top of your sphere. I, I have a kind of a question or challenge, a common challenge that I see with agents with that, right? And I'm, I'm curious if you guys have yeah. any data on your end of it, right? So if you look at the New York City market, we've continued to increase in the luxury market from about 10% to 12% of like, you know, over $5 million, you know, transactions. So maybe a lot of people want to size up, you know, the type of clientele they're getting, but it's like, oh, well, I've always done this and my referrals that come in tend to be on that. Is there any data or things that you see in terms of some of this follow up where, you know, that then eventually turns into something where those agents are able to eventually size up and the price points they work with? Yeah, good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, Maybe you gonna, we yeah. kind of run the gamut. We have a lot of luxury agents on close because those are very relationship oriented. So it kind of naturally graduate. I mean, this, that particular agent, one of his stories after he started going was uh, close has this thing called blast from the past where we'll look at old relationships and try to nurture them back. So we saw you once had a very strong relationship and we'll put it back in front of you. So he got one of those and it was this guy that had said he was going to, he, he's up in Park City and it was a, you know, buying a ski place and didn't buy, but then he checked in. He, this guy's in Atlanta. He said, "Hey, how's it going? You know, you said you're mentioning, you know, how's your daughter and all this stuff." He said, well, "Great, talk for 30 minutes, whatever." Next day, he gets a referral from um, friends, going to be in Park City, 14 million dollar sale on the heels of that. You know, it's like, okay, the guy's never bought from him, but he keeps checking in to see, yeah. him, gets the it's, referral, it's... and now he's buying a. Uh, 10 million plus place. I love that. I, I'm going to just two <clears throat> things. First of all, for you first on close. And, you know, I have a very connected team where 
um, usually I have somebody on my team supporting a buyer right. or a deal because yep. we do 60 to 90 yep. plus deals a year. And so, ha- you know, is is close able to tie in those communications yeah. with, okay, that's great because I am not quite there yet. Yeah. I'm team, getting team, it all clean. Team functionality, you form a team and then you can share the, all those communications yeah, yeah. so you can Love see. Love that. What, yeah. Okay. Then as far as when I got into the business, as I said, I had no relationships and I, you know, uh, I had relationships, but they were all dancers and artists and had no money to buy apartments. But no I was like the I was like the one bedroom queen. Yeah. I mean, there was not an apartment that I did. I could remember what maintenances were for uh, you know if it's a post war building in the seventies. It's like oh, eleven Riverside Drive, eleven N W, and they were like wow. But but that morphed through a consciousness where I was like I figured out what my average deal was. I figured out how many deals I did, and I really analyzed my data. And then it was really. A consciousness and so right now we're trying to equalize the number of exclusives to buyers and I have a whiteboard where we put the number of buyers we take out each week we try to do eight a week and we're 50 50 for the first time in my career 34 years which is kind of cool I, I, all right we, 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 ha- we have oh, to take a quick break no. uh, so much more to come this is talking New York real estate on the more network here at Brown Harris Stevens don't go anywhere Okay, everybody, we are back and we're talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about marketing strategies in good markets and bad markets. So let's, let's, you know, we're in a questionable market right now. Louise, you do a lot of videos, you know, in all markets, but are your videos today, personal videos, Mm -hmm. property videos, Mm -hmm. whatever, do you find that your videos today, for example, are helping you in business in a bad market? or in a questionable market, whatever. I think it's just another opportunity to touch. So absolutely, because some people respond to video and we know statistically it's like 80% stronger engagement with video. However, it's just that repetitiveness that Matt was talking about. So if I'm doing my job and I'm calling, but then I'm able to send somebody a video on top of that in a text, and then they send it to their friends, I can see in my videos that they get forwarded to other people. So it's, 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 that is how I gauge some of my success. Vince, one thing to just jump in on, when you do a video, there's a couple things that are absolutely essential to, to continuing that trend. Number one is uh, I would rather them on your listing than someone else's. Mm-hmm. So if you have, uh, I, I think it's five times more time on site with a video, their eyes are on yours and not somewhere else. So that's number one. I think number two also is is that in the same approach where a majority of of, of buyers and renters are going to listing aggregator sites, listing aggregator sites understand that. And what they understand is, is that they don't want to be on like Street Easy doesn't want them to be on homes and realtor. They want to be on Street Easy. So if they raise those listings higher on search results that have enhanced media like videos and 3D walkthroughs, that means they're going to stay longer on Street Easy. So what that also means is that more people are going to see your listing if you have enhanced media like video. So I, I just think that it is an it is a no brainer for every agent to strongly consider if you are camera ready. And, or have a good story to tell, uh, you know, do those at minimum with just a voiceover if you don't want to be on camera. So for those of us who are not camera ready ever, how do you do that? Just kidding. All right, look, <laughs> what a, so when, when agent, as head of marketing here, you know, agents come to you, managers come to you, what, you know, what are you telling them by way of conversations you should be having with your sphere of influence right now in this market that we are in right now when everybody's like, oh my God, what do I say, what do I do? How do I answer these questions? I'm at a loss. What kind of conversations do you suggest to people? And Ben, you the same thing that you have with your customers. Well, I think what, anything one, that's about in particular. One thing that we've seen is is that you know every week news comes out that changes the conversation. And Absolutely. what what I think you need to be is you need to go to the sources of where those infor- where that information is. And, and personally, I, and I'm not going to shout on another show, but I I do feel that that crossing the line and the line where, where Greg puts out to the 100%. industry. He's not even putting it out to just the Brown Harris Stevens agent. He's putting it out to the whole industry. No, 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 that's right. So like you listen to him for Love 20 minutes. Love the show, by the way, watch and it. You, and you read his uh, piece every Friday. 
I mean, granted, there's so many other places to go to, but he aggregates it so that you could have talking points to take to your clients on the one-to-one -one conversation, exactly. as well as maybe even doing your own video. You could do a video on a, a, a tripod on your phone, look into the camera, and, and, and do it yourself, or you work with companies like ourselves where you go into a studio and you film it. You're the trusted advisor. I mean, that's the whole, you know, that's the way you want to position yourself, right? So just like a financial advisor, you should be doing the exact same thing with all of the people that have bought yep. with you, right? That's 100% correct, but agents need to sometimes realize that they are that trusted advisor. We're not just showers, okay? We're not just people who run around, you know, doing this or that in real estate. We're the trusted advisor. They come to us for reason. What conversation should we be having now with, you know, our sphere of influence? Again, in a very questionable market, <clears throat> in preparation for what I hope is going to be a boom when we get out of this yeah. shortly. I, I, I'm, I, I think we're actually, I would argue that because we've actually seen a 2x uptick just to start the year in terms of number of inquiries from yeah. where yes, we sit. January. Yeah, That's where right. we sit That's today. That's very true, yep. Um, so I think we're on, you know, the early Track. precipice of, you know, the news kind of reports on things much later because it's mostly based on you know, closed uh, closed data. So, you know, right off the bat, I think that's, you know, a helpful uh, thing to get out there. I think staying in front in terms of like leading indicators like you talked about is very important because there's certain indicators that are leading indicators. There's certain that are lagging indicators. Um, also, just in that relationship base, because every top agent I've spoken to, the word, and we've mentioned here today, is relationship, relationship, relationship. Mm -hmm. I went to a, a great training years ago, multi-day thing. A guy by the name of Sean Callaghan in New Jersey runs a great <laughs> firm. He's bl He's gone blind now. He runs this thing called Unblinded. And takes you through a really great process of like how everybody could get a little bit deeper on a relationship level with clients. Sure. And it, it can be very simple. You know, where have you been? Where are you now? Where are you going? And I think whether you're sitting in front of a seller, whether you're having these conversations, knowing what's going to be the right information to advise on and interject with, you have to understand where that client and where your consumers want to go. Right. And so, and that's different for everybody depending on, you know, their situation. And when you can have those very deep conversations, I went on a townhome pitch, um, you know, a few months ago with an agent and we never even opened up the pitch package at all. And the, uh, the seller was a very sweet lady in Williamsburg, and she was crying and hugging us by the end of it. And all we did was just really go through that process. To me, that's a big success. Yeah. And, and that's everything. Yeah. Really. So, because then you can interject if you know that. Again, what's that right information? What are some of those leading indicators? What can I advise that is specific and unique to this person? And if you want to get in front of more people, you know, ask for people's advice. They're happy to sit down with you. Yeah. Correct. I, I, I would also just add to that that – you know, I think starting with being vulnerable yourself and um, and for me, it's it's yes, I, I sell real estate, but it's also being a connector for any and everything. Yeah. You know, I love well, that word connector. And, 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 and I watched that from from, you know, I grew up watching my mother do that just unconditionally. And that generosity is what people are attracted to. It's unconditional. It doesn't matter. You know, we lost it. We lost a bid. And, and instead of focusing on that, uh, the disappointment of that, it's like, just think about everything we learned, what we just learned through that. We're going to be more prepared. And you have to have faith that there's something better for you. And that's kind of the, the again, it all it starts with the mindset okay. and being a connector for not just real estate is having care for those individuals. You ever read the Go Giver book? I do. I yeah. have. There you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's right out of that. All right, Ben just mentioned a <clears throat> two times uptick, and we're seeing it in a lot of business here as well. So, you know, there seems to still, though, be a lot of people out there that are on the fence, all right, with, I want to buy, I need to buy. And we all know New Yorkers, you know, when, once you flip that switch, they're running down the street with their hair on fire. I mean, I mm -hmm. say this almost every week on my show because they can't get out there fast enough, right? We're not there yet, right? And we're hoping for a, a much better 2024. Um, but they're still on the sidelines. They're waiting for something. What is it they're waiting for? Is it interest rates? Is it, you know, the 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 the, the, the one and only, well, they got to drop the price a little bit because after all, prices are still too high. What are they waiting for? What is that something that when they find that something, things immediately start turning around and again, here we come running down the street. What is that? I think the- Is there something? Th this is great because right before coming on this, we actually had this conversation on my sales team meeting, we have a lot of very high, you know, seven figure performers on there. 
And I, the, the theme today was being direct, right? Because I think in a good market, what people are waiting for is, you know, they see everybody doing something and it's human nature that they're going to go. And as real estate agents, you know, anybody could find a squirrel or be that squirrel who finds a nut in 2021, right? And in challenging, questionable markets, or if we're going into one and you want to have your folks be able to take advantage of something, you need to be looking at the leading indicators. You need to be getting that in front of your clients. You need to know it's the right decision for them with what they want to do. Um, and you might need to be a little bit more direct and forceful and really confident in the information that you're giving them. And they're going to appreciate that. I mean, that comes from months, if not years, of setting that up and mm-hmm. giving the right advice in advance of that. But, you know, right now we're in that time frame where it's a, you know, don't wait until everybody's already rushed in. Take advantage of things now, and these are the reasons why. Yeah, I'm just going to share a, a quick story. I was with somebody on Sunday who is basically does not want to purchase until the end of the year. This is some mindset that this person, I was like, great, no problem. Let's start getting educated. And we went and looked at 12 places on Sunday, mm-hmm. and we have a second show, and we're making an offer on something. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying that sometimes so buyers are liars, because they don't, they need to be led. And I don't mean that in a dismissive way, I mean it in a genuine way. Be that educated, it, it, like you Being said. educated yeah. is everything, because it doesn't matter if, if, you know, what's right for your best friend might not be right for you, but you don't know until you're in it. And that, looking at it on the screen, is just not enough. And it'll trigger all the other things that you, one needs to be prepared. Alex, on the close side, what do you have in the hopper, what's coming out? What's gonna make your already great application better? Are there plans to take it, like we like to say, to the next level? There's always new stuff coming. So for us, you know, one of the things that we're- Tell us. We're always looking at is how do we, we tend to be at the center, right? Your relationships are at the center and there's lots of industry platforms and things that come together. And so more and more we're becoming the the center of truth. And so that means integrating to as many different platforms as possible. So like we recently added a a Maxa integration for design, which I know you guys use, and also a Canva integration. Canva is super popular out there. Um, And so one of the things we did was uh, we allow you to connect uh, connect close to it. They have have an app store in Canva and you can connect and then your listing data comes in and then you can create design. So at least for the non-designers, you get a little better than, you know, drawing a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Um, But what we're looking at, one of the things that's really untapped and for whether it's your own data or brokerage data is um, um, just a tremendous amount of information that flows through. So how do we better utilize that to find the people that are ready out of your sphere? And Mm -hmm. so we're looking at different types of information that can give you leading indicators to get you focused to widen. You only have time for the 200 people I mentioned realistically, but you have 23,000. What if I could surface somebody in that 23,000 that yeah. you know, but might be ready. Yeah. So we're looking at things like that, that and how do we tie other pieces of data together to mm-hmm. give you that leading indicator mm-hmm. uh, ahead of time? Because you have the relationship. One of the unique things we can do at the brokerage level when we talk about lead routing is that across a brokerage like VHS that has a lot of agents on close, we can say, we can route a lead based on who knows that person. So instead of routing it to just anybody, why don't you route it to the person who actually has a relationship it's great. It's right. great for the company. It's, it's great, great for the, the company. agent. It's good, yep. for, the, it's good right. for everybody. Right. And yep. So instead of the cold, random person, oh, yeah, I worked with them. I just forgot. It's been seven Am I years. giving you a referral fee? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Matt, Matt, take us to close. Uh, your final thoughts on all of this in our conversation today. Well, I, I mean, I said it at the break. I think something that really hit on is, is that if you're <clears> going to separate yourself from the rest of the pack, it, you just can't be different. Uh, and I, I know that Seth Godin uh, did a great uh, interview with, with Bess uh, recently that said, you know, if you walk into, you know, uh, an appointment, you got a clown suit on, you're different, but it's not going to help you get the business. <laughs> so, so what you need yeah. to do is you need to, you cannot just be different. And you have so to true. be Re- remarkable. You have to be something that goes above and beyond the call of duty yeah. that is going to allow someone to tell their friends that's going to build your business over time. And and I, I can't say that even obviously we're a high a high end real estate brokerage where, <laughs> you know, and the high end of us is the level of service we provide. We need to preach that every brokerage does. You know, and you're not going to get the business. There's so many agents out there unless you do something that was so amazing that they, in conversations in a social gathering, talked about you. So I, I just think that, like, I, I, I let's do less client conversations that are more impactful. Let's do more client relationship management 
with 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 a core group of people, like you were saying, two hundred, instead of just spraying and praying, because that stuff is just not going to get you business. I'd also yep. add after the transaction closes, like not disappearing. Oh, yeah. oh my a- God, that's a- key. That gets you more. A- a- absolutely, 100%. and I'll just say key. that we just did a townhouse that we did almost two million over the asking price. We had thirty eight appointments in ten Go days. Oh, girl. And we're going to be getting two more townhouses on that block, and it's because it's 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 data, action, and execution. Well said, Wheezy. Okay, so some keys to success from my head: client communication. We all talked about this. Uh, be adapt and innovative about you know any emerging trends. Make sure your your client base knows it. Focus on value and affordability. Weezy said this before, education, please, 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 whether it's blogs, webinars, seminars, conversations on the phone, email distribution, you know, stay in front of them with, you know, educational things, target niche markets. I think Alex said this before, you can't do this, especially if you're just starting out in this business, focus, stay focused and then grow as you need to, but stay focused, leverage digital marketing. I mean, we can, I mean, I can't talk about that anymore. It's like, our new way of everything. I don't even remember, and I josh about this when I'm teaching social media in, in real estate school. I can't even remember the last time I paid for, paid for out of my budget, a real estate ad in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, any magazine. I mean, it doesn't exist anymore, right? It's because Matt paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the columns don't, they're not there anymore. So where do we do it? We do it on social media. Anyway, I can go on and on and on. We're going to come right back after these very quick messages with my thoughts of the week. Don't go anywhere. All right, my thoughts for this week. Success is a multifaceted concept that can be measured through a combination of quantitative and qualitative indicators. In real estate, success is often gauged by metrics, such as closed transactions, sales volume, and market share. The number of successfully completed transactions and the total value of properties bought or sold provide tangible evidence of an agent's proficiency in guiding clients through the complexities of the real estate process. Client satisfaction, reflected in positive feedback and referrals, is equally crucial. Success often extends beyond financial achievements, encompassing professional development, ethical conduct, and community involvement. Ultimately, a comprehensive evaluation that considers both quantitative achievements and qualitative factors provides a more nuanced understanding of success in the dynamic and competitive world of New York City real estate. And that's our broadcast for today. Thanks to my guests for being here on set with me. You can follow me on Facebook, on Threads, Instagram, LinkedIn, or TikTok, at Vince Rocco, or my website, thinkvince.com. Always remember how wonderful life is while you are in this world. Thank you, Elton John and Bernie Taupin for that lyric. And to my listeners and viewers all around the world, from all of us here at the Moore Network and Talking New York Real Estate, thank you again for spending a part of your day with us, and I will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.